just like that. Two years of steep improvement flattened out in 15 and flattened a few predictions around the round table at this time last year when Port Adelaide not only didn't win the flag, they didn't make the eight, <laughs> uh, which has them on the wrong side of the balance sheet. It does. It does. They've gone from three wins to five to 12 to 14 to 12. How they missed the eight, is, I still can't understand. A list that's rated fifth in the competition with 13 players on that list above average or better. And a draw ranked 14th this year mm. gives them every mm. opportunity mm. to bounce back from a poor year. Ends of uh, Dick, Dixon and Tumpus, your boy. And it outs, Corns, and you'd have to add Ryder and Monfries with that as well. Yep. Um, mm. So th Ryder's a, a massive blow for them. And I think those ramifications are only just being felt now. Are you a believer in Port Giant? I am. Yeah, I am. I think they'll, uh, I think they'll respond. I think they must start 5-0, though. I think that's the the critical aspect to their season. Confidence, being able to defeat some opposition which they were restricted in their ball movement last so year. So that's St Kilda, Adelaide. Adelaide at home. Essendon. Essendon, Essendon GWS at home. Geelong. Giants away, Geelong at home. So they've got, uh, you know, what have they got there? One, Adelaide's considered away, but it's home. So one, two, three, four out of five in Adelaide to start. They need to be 5-0. and oh. Mm, where do you sit on right. Port, James? Uh, I have no idea. I just want the real, the real <laughs> Port Adelaide to stand up. Did they overachieve in 2014? We keep saying they underachieved in 2015. Is the real Port Adelaide somewhere in the middle? Because they were a kick-off making a grand final a couple of seasons ago. And then they were getting beaten by some run-of-the-mill mm. teams last year. I, I couldn't work it out. I found it nearly impossible to put a handle on how has the bottom fallen out so quickly. They weren't playing that fast running game and yet funnily enough I saw them play Hawthorne a couple of times and they're one of the teams that always gives Hawthorne a tough time so their style of play stacks up against the best teams but they weren't producing it off last enough. three last year they beat Hawthorne the Bulldogs and Fremantle mm. all that played finals so yeah, they came they just goes to show they came really out very well. strong but I think uh, look I think over the last couple of years they've tried to bring in certain players Ryder I think they brought in Ryder for the wrong reasons he was he's not a forward he's on his day, I think he's one of the best number one ruckmen in the competition. Mm. It's good timing to get Charlie Dixon, though, isn't it? Yeah. But Charlie Dixon, to me, and I'm a massive, and I've been a massive fan of Charlie Dixon's for a long time. He's going to be huge for them, and I think on the back of Charlie Dixon, he's going to be the one that puts them back up into the finals. And the reason I say that is when Westoff goes and does what Westoff does, goes and puts himself behind the ball. That's when they've really struggled going inside 50. Schultz isn't your big hulking key forward. Schultz now gets to play a little bit more of a, a nicer role for him because he's a crash and bash player. Mm. But he's not a six foot five, 100 kilo player who throws his body around. You know, he, his body needs a little bit of ten, tender care. Charlie Dixon is now that man that when they've got no west off, it's just Charlie Dixon. He straightens them up. You have to question. If you're going to question Harley Bunnell, you have to question Charlie Dixon's approach to the game. His preparation, surely. He's, they're, they're, they're like for like. You've got to be in your bonnet a bit. Okay? <laughs> All we were doing was qualifying. You need to get the best out of him, so he's got to tick every box preparation wise. Every box. And Charlie Dixon needs to do exactly the same every, thing. No doubt. Out. More. He has to do more. He, does, he hasn't played games. He has, he's played 65 lot, games in he? five years. But a lot of that's preparation. Yeah, a, lot a, lot of ankle, a lot of ankle injuries. Yeah. Yeah. His body's the one that's let him down more yeah. than probably. Yeah, oh, there's a bit of both. I don't think you can separate the two. I'll, I'll look at Port. And I think they play some fantastic football. When they're on, there's no one better to watch. There's a lot of trick plays, a lot of flair, a lot of uh, offensive um, gearing, if you like. But are they prepared to grind? Are they prepared to get involved in the hard wins when it gets really tough? Do they find a way to get across the line? They lost a lot of close games last year. Mm. They lost five games by under five points. So they were, in a, they were in a lot more games than what we give them credit for. But two seasons ago, Kingy, they believed they'd run over anyone. And yeah. they did inevitably win all of those close They had some big injuries. It dropped off last year. last year, didn't they? With who, who like Wines, Pollock, they missed. Carlo and Trengrove were out for, for periods of time. White, yeah. that outside runner, was out mm. for periods as well. I think that you know, they were six and seven against top eight teams. So, so they're good enough. We know they're good enough. But why didn't they make the eight? Because they lose games that they should never lose against some ordinary opposition. Did, did teams work them out? I think they played a different way against down. Port. Every, every time you saw teams play wider, try and take the speed out of their mm. game, try and deny them their switch, make them play super aggressive, which they love. Will this 10 metre zone be a good thing for Port? Because Kenny, Kenny's mantra is basically be brave. Yeah, That's what he loves to say, be brave. So mm. that kick all of a sudden opens up in the middle for them now. 
I think this could be a really What about big the thing interchange for? restriction? Is their running power wasn't the factor last year that it was the previous two years? Does it have the potential if if footy is going to tire during matches? Mm. If Port hasn't every, hasn't every team now got that running power? Most of the really good teams. Hasn't everyone now just lifted the bar? I think we're too fitness. quick to say the interchange is going to have an impact. I mean, there's no sub now, so you're getting more rest than you had before. So, I, I, think think I, mean, I, me, I don't want to hear how many personal bests they've ran during a pre season. Mm. I don't want to hear that. Mm. I just want to see it. But that, that, you can understand why that was because they've gone from playing at Amy Stadium where they were having sheets on the seats to then going to, to where they are now at Adelaide Oval. And I think that was part of just the build of. Selling, Adelaide selling Port Adelaide months, to Adelaide again. Mm. Yeah, oh, look, maybe I just want to see it. Yeah, and maybe we I just all want do to see now. it yeah. again. They've got some stars. They've got some freak mm. players on that list. Robbie Gray, Chad Wingard, these guys, mm. they're, they're, they're game changers. Stars. They're they the right age too. Turn the game when on you look at it in about five minutes. And, you know, Wingard's kicked 43, 43, and 53 goals last three years. I, I just, I think they love playing an exciting brand of football, I don't know if they love the grind. That's all I'm saying. And as soon as they embrace that, they'll win those close games. They won't be close games. Well, I Mm. think they can win 14 games. That puts them in the mix. Mm. They're about on the edge of the top four, so they might be back in business. No, I'm with you. I think 14 is. I think they'll be back playing finals before. The, the Lobie side of things, so mm. they don't Just get access to Ryder, is, it, it, it all hinges now on him. But Lobie played his best football, and they probably played yeah. their best football on the back of Lobie being their number one. Just runner. rucks all day. He, mm. He's a workhorse. You know, you've got Dixon to jump in there if they need to. Trengove can jump in there if they need to. But they've just got a big workhorse in there now. But I, I will go back and say, if Ryder was their number one ruckman this year, you know, the sky's the limit, I would have thought, but... Yeah, they don't want an injury for Lobie. No. no, not at all. Look at their, their like clearance work. for North Melbourne. Their toughness, their clearance work. They're the reverse of what we talked about with uh, with the Kangaroos. They're minus 51 clearances across the course of the year, which is bottom portion of the, of the table, yet plus almost 10 goals mm. across the season. Yeah. Mm. So w- when they get it, they make you pay. Well, they keep they keep hold of it. They yeah. run and they run and distribute amongst themselves and they've got explosive speed, some stacking. of those guys you're talking about. Because Boak, Ebert, Wines, Hartlett... There's, there's no tough, reason for it. There's, tough boys. there's actually Great. no reason oh, no, that's for anything at the moment. That, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. The more you look at it, the more you scratch your head and say, how they not... There's not only not play There's eight, upside, isn't there? How they not win it? How they not get the top four with these... This list and these capabilities, and I think that they could be the big spike. You know, they, they could break into the top four. I'd be staggered if they weren't to play finals this year. Does Kenny change I think their he has approach? To. I think he has to. I think that when you look at the way they get... A lot last year, when you listen to the press conferences and you listen to the talk coming out of Port Adelaide from the players and from the coaching staff, it was almost as if they spoke about effort every week. And it wasn't a real... Uh, depth of qualifying why they lost. Is it what strategy was going wrong? What part of their game was failing? And that's okay. They can keep all that stuff in house. But I think this year we just want more talked about than just effort. Okay. Efforts are given in the competition now. Why are they why are they winning? Why are they losing? I think this year will tell a big tale. I don't think there's been a player at the desk who's been tipped to kick less than fifty goals. The <laughs> final question on Port Adelaide is how many goals Dixon will Charlie Dixon? <laughs> I am Charlie Dixon. Charlie Dixon. Oh, number Charlie. Uh, forty. Forty. Yeah, forty. But if his body holds up, forty. You might have to just give us a slight variation for a nearest. Forty nine. Forty nine. That's, that's, that's a good bump up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden. Might as well have gone fifty. I didn't really. go fifty though. <laughs> Oh, 30 goals. No, oh, a uh, dreadful year, John. That's a solid year, 30 that's a, goals. That's a poor, no, that's a poor yeah, year for a key forward. No, it's not. That's solid. I'm going to go two goals a game, 20. Now, that's a oh, dreadful oh, year. Oh, oh, you're smart, Alan. Yeah, 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 what he does. Yeah, he's smart, Alan, yeah, what he does. Hey? Yeah. He play, he's 65 he games in five years, the numbers don't lie. That's Port Adelaide.